Here I want to show you guys a nice combinatorics problem known as Langford's problem. So the idea is we want to classify all natural numbers in so that the list of 2n natural numbers, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, all the way up to n, n, can be arranged so that for all m between 1 and n, there are exactly m terms between each occurrence of m. So there's a bit to parse out here, so let's do some examples just so that we can wrap our heads around it. So let's start with the number 1. Well, that's pretty easy because notice our list will be 1, 1, but there's no way to construct an arrangement of this so that you have one term between 1 because we run out of terms really, really quickly, right? So let's see that this is not possible. That's not super interesting, but that's good data. So now let's look at n equals 2. That means we want to take the list 1, 1, 2, 2. And now let's keep in mind that in order to achieve this goal, we'll need two numbers between each occurrence of 2. So if we put each occurrence of 2 on the board, we've got to put two numbers between there, but the only two numbers left over are 1, 1. But that means this is also not possible because we don't have a term between the occurrences of 1. If instead we tried to construct it so that we satisfied the term in between the occurrences of 1, we would see that we would have 1, 2, 1. And then we have to place the 2 somewhere. We would either place it at the beginning or at the end. But then we only have one term between each occurrence of two. Either way you play this out, it is not possible also. So I'll just say in each of these cases, n equals one and n equals two, it is not possible. So maybe this is never possible, but that wouldn't be very interesting. We will see that it will be possible in these two cases. So here, let's say we're looking at n equals 3. You can play around with it a little bit, and you'll see what works is 3, 1, 2. Okay, and then notice that we've got... And since we've put a 1 here and a number after it, that means we have to follow with a 1. But now we've got three numbers after the three, so that means we need to have another three so that we have three terms here. Then we've got two numbers after the two, so we have to end in two. So that's one arrangement, but I bet there are more. Maybe you like calculate some more if you'd like and post them in the comments. And now let's look at n equals four. So we can maybe start with 4, 1 again, just like we started with 3, 1 here, because that seemed to be nice structure. And then from there, we could do maybe three, and then another one. And now we can essentially do the same thing that we had here, just interjecting the four when we need to. So let's see, maybe we do two, four. So now notice there are four digits between the two occurrences of four, so that's good. Then we're up to the point where we have to include a three, and then we'll have to include a two just to satisfy the rule. So let's notice that it was possible in these two cases. Now you can play with this a little bit more. Maybe you could play with it up to n equals eight. And what you'll quickly get at is the following guess. And that is that this is possible if and only if n is congruent to zero or three modulo four. So notice that this thing is congruent to 3 mod 4, n equals 3. n equals 4 is congruent to 0 mod 4. It was possible in both of those cases, but it was impossible in the other two cases. Okay, from here I'd like to sketch out an algorithm which will write one of these lists in our possible case in the right configuration, and then we'll prove the impossibility of the other case. Okay, so here I'd like to present a quick algorithm which will allow us to write an allowable configuration. In other words, a configuration that satisfies this rule in the case when we have n is congruent to 0 or 3 mod 4. Here we'll look at the case when n is 0 mod 4, and we'll look at the special case when n is equal to 16. Although I think this algorithm is pretty extendable easily, so I think doing this one case is kind of enough to see how it happens 
lines in general. Furthermore, this algorithm for arrangement comes from this nice website that I found. So it's dielectrics.com slash Langford slash Dave Moore dot HTML. So if you guys like to check this out, this has a lot of good information. Okay, so the n equals 16 case. So the first thing that we do is start at 8, which is n over 2. Now if we're in the case when n is 3 mod 4, you do something like the floor of n over 2 or whatever. So we can visually see what's going on. Let's make a rectangle with 2 times 16 or 32 boxes on the board that we can fill in as we go through this algorithm. Okay, so there we've got it. Now we're ready to start filling these boxes in with the numbers 1 to 16, but each are occurring twice. And a similar strategy will follow if n is 3 mod 4, which is the other case here. Okay, so first off, we'll start with n over 2. In the odd case, you'll do something like the floor of n over 2. So we'll put an 8 here because that's n over 2. And now we're going to build up one at a time until we hit 16. So we'll have 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay. So now that we've done this, we're kind of restricted in what we can do. So notice we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight numbers after this number eight. That means the number eight must occur here. Okay. Then furthermore, from nine to eight is eight more numbers. So that means this one is free at the moment, but this guy right here must be equal to nine. And now we can continue this kind of similarly. So if we count from 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, we know the number 10 has to go here. And now we can kind of see the pattern. We'll count from 8 to 16 again, but we'll skip one each time. So that means an 11 will go there. That constructs 11 boxes between these two 11s. A 12 here, 13, 14, 15, and a 6. 16 here. But here we've only worked with the numbers between 8 and 16, nothing between 1 and 7. So now we need to work with those numbers. And we'll do this a little bit at a time, starting with the evens and then moving towards the odds. So we'll start with the number 2 here, and then in every other square we'll put an even number. So we can put a 4 here, and then we'll put a 6 here, and that's all of the evens because notice we started with an 8 here. But now that we've included 2, 4, and 6, we're restricted where the other two, four, and six has to go. So there needs to be two boxes from this two. So that means another two has to go here. So one, two, three, four. Another four has to go here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Another six has to go here. So that's starting to look good. And now the only numbers that are left are one, three, five, and seven. And from here, it's a fairly easy end. So notice we've got three chunks, three numbers chunked in a row here, so we can put threes on either side. The next number that we can include is seven, and that kind of naturally goes here, and then at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so at this point right here. Okay, now notice we've got one, two, three, four, five numbers filled in here. So that's an obvious place to put the two fives. And then finally, an obvious place to put two, the two ones goes like this. So there, we've made a configuration in the case when n is equal to 16. And I think this is a generalizable algorithm, which shouldn't take too much work to generalize. But what we want to focus on for the rest of the video is proving the impossibility when n is congruent to one or two mod. Four. So let's do that. Okay, we just went over an algorithm for when this kind of thing is possible. Now we'll prove carefully that such a configuration is impossible if n is congruent to 1 or 2 mod 4. And we're going to do this by way of contradiction. So in other words, we'll suppose we have an allowed, and by allowed I mean it satisfies this rule over here, configuration. So let's label that configuration as a sequence. And that sequence, I'll call A1, A2, A3, all the way up to A2N. And from here, I want to define two other sequences. So for all K 
k between 1 and n, let's set x sub k equal to the position of the first appearance of k, and then y sub k will be equal to the position of the second appearance of k. So let's look at a little example of that before we dive into the rest of the proof. So let's say we've got a configuration that starts like this. I won't look at the whole thing, but let's say it just starts like this. So 7, 4, 5, 8, 2, 6, finally 4, 2, and then dot, dot, dot. Okay. So notice that we've got four appearing here and here. And then furthermore, we have the number two appearing here and here. This is the second position. This is the three, four, five, six, seventh position. This is the one, two, three, four, fifth position. Six, seven, eight, and this is the eighth position. So that means that x sub four, the position of the first appearance of 4 is 2, whereas y sub 4 is equal to 7, the second appearance of 4. Furthermore, x sub 2 is 5, and y sub 2 is 8. So let's notice that there's a structure for a difference here. Notice that y4 minus x4 is equal to 7 minus 2, which is 5, which is the same thing as 4 plus 1. So it's that index plus 1. Furthermore, we can see that y sub 2 minus x sub 2 is equal to 2 plus 1 because 8 minus 5 is 3. So in general, um, y sub k minus x sub k is equal to k plus 1. And that's pretty easy to see just from our definition of xk and yk here. Okay, so let's get rid of this and then we'll dive into the rest of the proof. So based off our example, we saw that yk minus xk seem to be k plus 1. And that checks out with our definition of xk and yk. Furthermore, if we take all of these numbers, x1 to xn, y1 to yn, we achieve the set 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 2n, because that's just looking at all of the possible positions, but we have 2n numbers, so there are 2n possible positions, each occurring exactly once. Okay, so let's see where we can go from here. So we want to look at two types of things. So the first thing that we'll look at is the sum as k goes from 1 to n of xk plus the sum as k goes from 1 to n of y sub k. Okay, but notice that's the sum of everything in this set, which is the sum, same thing as the sum of everything in this set. So that's 1 plus 2 all the way up to 2n. But that's a triangular number, which is pretty easy to calculate. There's a standard closed formula that gives us 2n times 2n plus 1 over 2. But that simplifies to n times 2n plus 1. Okay, and then let's maybe set this equal to the number a. All right, just for use a little bit later. And now let's look at the difference. So the number b, so I'll set this equal to the sum as k goes from 1 to n of y sub k minus the sum as k goes from 1 to n of x sub k. But notice that that is exactly this sum of k plus 1. So in the case that we have k is equal to 1, we get the number 2 because k plus 1 is 2 plus 3 plus all the way up to n plus 1. But then again, that's very close to being a triangular number. Notice that that is n plus 1 times n plus 2 over 2 minus 1, just because we're missing this first term. But that's pretty easily simplifiable. And I'll let you guys check the details, but that simplifies to n times n plus 3 over 2. Okay, another thing that we notice is that a is the sum of two objects, and b is the difference of the same two objects. And a fairly well-known and simple number theory fact is that these have the same parity.
So in other words, A and B are both even or they are both odd. We could also say that we know for a fact that A is congruent to B modulo 2. That's like measuring the evenness or the oddness. But that means that over here, this has to be congruent to this mod two. Okay, so let's bring that fact up to the top and see if that causes a problem. On the last board, we determined that if we had a possible configuration in this case, then n times two n plus one was congruent to n times n plus three over two mod two. Now we're finally ready to reach our contradiction and we'll do that via the two cases that we're living in when n is one or two mod four. Okay, so let's look at this case when n is one mod four first. Well, this one can be simplified very, very quickly. Notice if n is one mod four, then n is also one mod two. That's because anything that's one mod four is odd. But now we can just plug this value of one up here and see what happens. So that'll give us one times three on this left-hand side must be congruent to one times four over two, which is equal to two, which is congruent to zero mod two. But here we've reached a contradiction because we have an odd number on this left-hand side is congruent to zero mod two. In other words, it's even. That's clearly a contradiction. Okay, so if n is two mod four, then that actually splits off into two facts when we're talking about n mod two. So that means n itself is zero mod two, but then n over two is congruent to one mod two. So clearly if n is two mod four, then that means we can write n as four p plus two. Now if we divide that by two, we get something that's clearly odd. Okay, but now let's notice if we plug these two facts up here, we reach a contradiction again. So if we have n is zero mod two up here, we'll see that we get zero on the left-hand side of the congruence is congruent to, so n over two is one mod two, and then if we take an even number and add three, we also get an odd number, so that is one mod two. So we've reached a contradiction in this case as well. So in the end, we've shown this impossibility, and that's a good place to stop.